It used to be leave your, leave your problems at home. We're not here to coddle you. Let me play my part. Check two, hey. Check like, is that real? Did that happen? Like, the structure of your brain actually changes. And do you still feel that every day? And then it got time for guitars. Eating disorder, like... I didn't want to die. Tendencies. But I didn't want to live. Yeah. Girl. You gotta go in the hospital. You feel powerless because the body has a fear reaction. The opportunity to empower. No one can take away my power. I won't take myself out. Artists that are true like that, those are the ones that tend to like create change. read about this and I thought it was really interesting because I struggle with it too. Um, I don't love, and I've been this way my whole life, so I don't know what's wrong with me, but I don't love having my back the way you do right now. Your back is to the opening of the room. I didn't like, Are honestly, you I noticed. I noticed it right do when I walked in. Places? No, I'm good. I'm, not. Okay. <laughs> I'm good now. Look out! No. Oh my God. Um, yeah. No, I don't love no. having my back to an open door. Yeah. I don't love having my back to the entrance and people joke about, oh, I'm part Italian. I have to sit in the corner. I don't oh, know yeah. what Italians have to do with it. <laughs> Forget I'm Italian too. Forget about it. <laughs> I don't know. That's some old ridiculous saying, but <laughs> I hate that feeling like your skin crawls, right? Mm. So I kind of selfishly park yeah. myself here <laughs> in the back of the no, room. No, no. But at work, I read, <laughs> no, I read that uh, um, I read that uh, veterans, that companies struggle to hire and keep, retain mm-hmm. uh, veteran employees, and that a lot of the time, it's as simple as not making them sit in a room with their back to the mm-hmm. entrance. Yeah. And like, that if people can say, hey, I'm not trying to ask for a billion accommodations, but this tiny little change mm-hmm. would make this conversation so much easier for me. Yeah. Well, and, and it used to be. with your it, back to the door. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fascinating. So are yeah. they... It used to be leave, leave your problems at home. Like, we're not totally. here to coddle you. But now companies, organizations are starting to come around to the fact that, okay, like, based on your background and your identity, it's like, okay, like, things that you've experienced, okay, maybe we can make these tiny accommodations. It's not going to hurt the bottom line, which is what, you know, they're always well, worried about a corporation. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, yeah, veterans do a lot. I think yeah. they've pulled their weight plenty. Exactly. I think yeah. they must have the biggest inner eye roll for someone mm-hmm. to say, hey, we're not here to coddle you. They're like, really? Mm-hmm. Do you have any right. idea what exactly. I've done for you? Yeah. There's bad guys out there. I know we don't like to talk about it, especially liberals. Yes, there you know, are. we like to think that everyone shares our values and uh, like you were saying, values mm-hmm. are learned. Mm-hmm. And uh, bad values can be unlearned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and there's people out there fighting the good fight to keep the people who need some unlearning off of our shores. And and just and just like CVT like does so much work for the people who who need it the most. And you know that 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 that's what I love about DAP is that, you know, they're, you know, oftentimes these these people, you know, who are out there, so you know, keeping us safe so that, I mean, whether it's military people, first responders, you know, paramedics, whoever it is, like, you know, so we can sit at home and binge on Netflix. It's Mm -hmm. like, it's, you know, they're a lot of times, and especially military people, um, a lot of times they've been, they've been taught, they, they've been trained to not complain. Like, don't complain. Don't make it about you. Like, we don't want to hear about your problems, you know? So it's even, there's that extra wall. There's that extra level of like trying to get through to get these people, um, who a lot of times need it, Need, need the help the most and are like the last person to complain or ask for help you know yeah. so i really love working with organizations that are that are really uh working to to help um the people who, who need it the most yeah i'm glad you mentioned trauma in the workspace because uh i think about often this concept of um uh, wasted talent and potential talent latent talent all these kind of things just mm. sitting and, and you know wonder for for a second how many people aren't achieving what they could because of some nonsense they had happen to them when they were a kid or because they were born in the wrong parent uh, neighborhood or they picked the wrong parents or this or that. And the idea that the business world is clicking into this going, hey, wait a minute, there's talent out there that's not being used, that's being wasted, and I want to get to it before my competitor does. Mm-hmm. I want to open up this person and get them to their full abilities before my competitor does, that there's a financial yeah. motivation to take care of the mentally ill is so inspiring for me Mm -hmm. and you're saying that people are starting to get it yeah i I think so people are starting uh to get it i think it's 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 a part of people's uh identity that i think that i think uh organizations are starting to to become aware of and make accommodations Mm -hmm. for right i mean it's 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 one of those things where you know if you have some you know physical limitation you know um some sort of like physical 
disability or, or something that that's easy to see. And that's easy to like, you know, make accommodations for. And even that wasn't always the case, <laughs> you know, the Americans with Disabilities Act. I mean, that, yeah, for this, sure. this is all progress. Like this stuff takes time. Um, but that's, that's actually what, what, what quorum does. I mean, so, uh, in fact, our logo, I love to, I love to hype this. So like our logo, it looks more like a C, so it's quorum with a Q, right. But oh. it looks more like a C kind of like turned on its side. And so like the inside of it kind of ends up looking like a Q because of the little space that's missing. And then anyways, um, but <laughs> what's their website on, on a deep philosophical. So it's quorum, MN, uh, dot, dot com. Okay, cool. But, um, but the, the meaning behind the logo is that, is that our work is never done. That's why it's not a completed circle is because our, our work is, is never done. And we never expect it to be because, uh, this is progress. Progress takes work. Progress takes time. And we're never going to finish. We're, 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 we're on a journey that will never be completed. Like we're, we're fighting a sort of like a battle that will never be, you know, completely over. Like we need to keep working, um, in order to, you know, to ensure progress yeah. keeps happening. And, um, and so a lot of, a lot of the work, uh, that, uh, our, our awesome, uh, uh, executive director, uh, Rebecca Wagner, uh, does is she's out talking to, to companies, organizations, um, you know, corporations, you know, a, a lot of times it's every once in a while she'll, she'll talk to an organization where, uh, and sometimes these are big companies where they've never thought about diversity, about inclusion, about, you know, other than what the law says they have to do, like, you know, ADA stuff or whatever. Um, and so they'll bring her in to like, you know, basically sit at a big, uh, a big, uh, like boardroom table with a bunch of people in suits and like, okay, so, so tell us about this, you know? Yeah. And uh, one of our one of our talking points at Quorum is um, that what's what's good for the world and what's good for business um, have never been more closely in alignment. Uh, and and you know one thing we say is like uh, you know the reason the the number one reason to be you know inclusive uh, of of people's identities and and to embrace diversity is number one number one, two, and three is because it's the right thing to do, right? It's just the right thing to do. Um, however, we realize that that doesn't get a ton of traction in, in boardrooms <laughs> when no, people are worried about the bottom directed. line. Nope. <laughs> so what we also do is we try to find ways um, that we can uh, share with with folks uh, about how uh, it is a financial, uh, ha- it does have financial benefits. Like, and one of them is talent retention, right? Talent uh, acquisition and retention. Uh, you know, there are other... You know, your competitors, for example, are like they're they don't want to hire like those kinds of people with those kinds of problems, you know. But like you just said, these can be like really talented people, totally who are you know, just their their talents are untapped because people you know, uh, have overlooked that part of them because of some other part of their identity that they don't want to deal with. And so that's what we say is like there are definitely financial, um, uh, benefits to embracing diversity and embracing, uh, you know, different identities and um, creating that culture of inclusion within your organization. Um, and you know, just like podcasting, like not everybody's doing it yet. <laughs> you yeah, know, so sure. like get, you want to get ahead of the competitors. You, you want to get ahead of the uh, of the competitors and um, like uh, HRC, uh, Human Rights uh, Coalition. Like they have uh, they they do studies all the time. Campaign Ca- campaign, yeah, yeah. Human Rights Campaign. Uh, they do studies all the time, and they have like their yearly index, and so they you know they do a lot of research. Um, you know, and they're always coming up with different, uh, they're actually kind of doing some of our work for us, I guess, too. Like, uh, you know, they think they call it like their corporate equality index. Um, and they're always doing a lot of work to like figure out those ways that, uh, that it's uh, financially beneficial to companies like, you know, happier employees, if they can, Mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, feel like they're able to express, you know, themselves and less sick days and, um, better sort of like team dynamics and, you know, just sort of all these things. And this is like a really sort of evolving, sort of just emerging sort of part of the whole kind of business, uh, landscape and that, that we're just sort of starting to explore right now, which totally. really, which we, so if, if you're picking up on a theme at all, it's that, it's that <laughs> I love to be just sort of like who I am. I love to be out at the cutting edge of, of everything, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm super ADD in case you can't tell, because I, mean, <laughs> I don't think I've taken four breaths this whole time. No, um, you should it makes her a good podcaster, I guess, but you should do a lot more interviews because you're completely natural at answering these questions. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, Not that you need promotion with your giant audience, but oh, yeah, you didn't well, get into any numbers. Are you uncomfortable talking about how many people listen? Um, well, it, yeah, it, it really kind of, really kind of depends. It, it varies. Yeah. Kind of, kind of based on the time of year. Oh, really? Um, well, I mean, well, 
Well, it, it depends on sort of like, okay, so the the, the Pride podcast, the, the Twin Cities Pride yeah. uh, podcast that I do for the Twin Cities Pride organization, which is the big LGBTQ uh, advocacy organization here in the Twin Cities, people listening outside the area. Um, I think, so a lot of my listens, a lot of my subs- subscribers, whatever, that that all comes from sort of like leading up to Pride and then like during Pride and then like kind of tapers off. So it's, it is kind of cyclical. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, so, you know, in case you didn't notice, so, so like, I, I, I kind of like, I'm, I'm ADD, so I always need to like be like into something that interests me and always sort of being out at the cutting edge of everything is like, Mm -hmm. is, is really, uh, is really interesting to me, which is why I love working, uh, with Quorum, uh, because we're, we're really out there. Um, in fact, the mayor, uh, the mayor of Minneapolis, uh, he spoke at one of our, at one of our functions a couple of years ago. And uh, Minneapolis, for anybody listening, you know, uh, you know, we we tend to be like a pretty progressive, pretty, you know, um, uh, intellectually sort of evolved kind of place <laughs> compared to so. some other parts of the country. You Anyone know. in the coast is just picturing fire. Every time <laughs> yeah, you say exactly, that, they're fire, picturing lot, lots of corn, Macy. right? Yeah, yeah. Just there's nothing here. Don't worry about it, yeah, you guys. Yeah, there's exactly. Nothing here. Uh, but but we like to think of ourselves as you know uh, <laughs> a certain way. <laughs> Uh, but even so, he was uh, he was saying you know and, and you know and and the mayor is awesome too, uh, Jacob Fry. You know he's uh, he's a champion of, of rights of you know for everyone and, and equality and diversity. And uh, and he said at one of our things he spoke is he's like anytime I want to know what's going on at the diversity uh, or or inclusion front or uh, equality uh, front, like I just look to Quorum because like they're like four or five years ahead yeah. of like where everybody else is right now. Really anytime cool. I want to see what's what's coming, you know, down the road, I. I I, I talk to you guys to see, you know, what, what it is that I need to know. Um, and that's, uh, and that's what I love about, uh, being involved with quorum. That's what I love about being involved with DAP, uh, the domestic abuse project, because they're out there like doing all that amazing research and incredible, you know, work like out there, the cutting edge. Um, and, uh, you know, Twin Cities Pride is, is, a, is an amazing organization too, um, out there doing, doing really great work, uh, helping people, you know, live, uh, you know, as their true authentic selves. Um, and they even say too, so, um, w- one of the, one of the formers, uh, at one of the MCs, uh, at, at Twin Cities Pride, uh, at the festival, uh, the first year that I covered the festival, uh, was, it was, so it was actually, um, it was, yeah. So yeah, 2016, I think it was. And, uh, she talks about how, uh, living out loud and, uh, loving, loving hard and living out loud is, is, is a radical act. So like, Mm. you don't have to be a director of a big organization or of a small organization. Uh, there are a lot of ways, uh, there, there are a lot of ways to, 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 to be active. There are a lot of ways to be an an activist. There Mm -hmm. are a lot of ways to make a difference in the world, even if what works for you is just showing up and being yourself. Um, which wasn't always easy to do in a lot of ways, uh, still isn't easy yeah. to do. Um, which is why, um, you know, it's, we, we talk about also how like coming out matters. We have a whole day actually at Quorum. We have a whole day of the year. It's like our biggest event of the year, uh, national coming out day, right. Where we, we right. celebrate this. Um, it's, you know, just, just being yourself and like, like living as your true self and, and living, a, an authentic life loving hard and living out loud is, is is a radical act and we love to to embrace that absolutely ideology do you have a few more minutes yeah can i take a quick break yeah yeah cool get it going i forgot the last thing you said and we're back after we took those, a quick break after those words from I mogami gonna, i was gonna our official <laughs> our official sponsor, sponsor maybe, arigato maybe <laughs> arigato for the know. noiseless cables um i Teresa's forgot the last thing that. you said She's so i don't have no idea how to segue into this i was oh, gonna hide yeah. it with the perfect splice but now oh, yeah. i can't that's right. People are just thinking about Mogami, Mogami okay. cables right uh, now. Living so, your true right. authentic life and not being in the closet, I think yes. is where we were at. Um, does Quorum work internationally and are they interested in what you might call developing nations that are a lot less progressive if we think we've got it bad here? I'm so glad you asked that question. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a good question. You're good at this. Only your second episode? Wow. So uh, not my second interview. Uh, no, okay, yeah. Second okay. episode. Second episode of this podcast, but you're already yeah. Um so okay, yes. Yeah, so the short answer uh is not directly, but um in 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 a way, I guess. Uh, so quorum is part of the, I always get this wrong, NGLCC, which is the national, I think it's, I don't even know that it stands for anything anymore, but it's, it's the, the LGBTQ chamber of commerce, like the national chamber of commerce. Um, and there's like, 
gosh, I want to say there's, I don't know, between 30 and 50 like chapters throughout the country. Um, and so we work, um, on a national level with them and then they work, you know, on an international level with other, you know, LGBT sort of like business focused organizations, um, throughout the world. Um, but the other thing is, oh, Veg Fest is tomorrow. Did you know that? Veg Fest? Veg, veg Fest. It's like, uh, I think it's the state fairgrounds. It's, uh, for vegetarians. I'm, I'm, I'm vegetarian. I I'm tell like, my sister about that. I'm like a 90% vegan. My, I just got the alert on my phone. Sorry. I told you I'm ADD. If I saw veg blinking, Fest is blink, blinking lights. Yeah. I've never Since been, we're but, on the subject. But, but I hear it's no, pretty you cool. you can keep it there, man. Yeah, no, I, I get distracted. You sit I'm, on a thousand dollar phone. So yeah, yeah. I, um, okay, I'll put it, here. I'll, I'll, I'll do okay. this. So NGLCC? There we go. NGLCC, yes. So that's the, the national, so, and then they work internationally. Um, and <laughs> yes, I know. I'm Thank you. your mom you're when you're like 10. Yeah. Hey, hey, like, over here. Right over here. here. Hey, no, yeah. I'm, I'm good at from, uh, many years of being a karate instructor. Oh, there we go. Like, yeah. Because if you don't keep on track keep in the dojo, tights. you end up in the hospital. Yes. Good, good point. I actually did jujitsu for a long time. And, uh, that's actually another thing you learn pretty quick. If you're not there, right there, right now, you're going to get, you know, choke the F out real quick. Was martial arts good for your ADD? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It really, it really was. So I, I was involved for, yeah, a lot of years and then I'm, I kind of, kind of took a break, hashtag entrepreneur life, uh, but, uh, but yeah. I'm, 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 uh, actually working on getting back into it. Cool. <clears throat> but yes, it does teach you to be like right here, right now. It's a focus or die lifestyle. It really is. Yeah, it really Medication is. Medication free. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, Before okay. the Veg Fest, yes. you were talking about these people. I was talking people. about, yes, these, these people. Um, so yeah, so they work internationally. Um, we do. There is another organization um, who is sort of loosely affiliated with us. In fact, we honored them uh, this year at our awards. Um, the The... The person who runs it, actually, it's a couple of guys who uh, who run it, uh, was our rising, like, young professional rising star of the year. So the name of the organization is Mosier. So it's M-O-S-S-I-E-R. Okay. And um, they have a whole story about how they got started. But uh, essentially what they do is they work with um, impoverished people in developing nations uh, to help them to become self-sufficient. Uh, through starting a business, whatever that business is. A lot of times uh, it's uh, s- some sort of agricultural business. Like they'll um, they'll help them buy goats or like help them like build like a small chicken farm or something like that to become self-subsistent. And then they teach them uh, entrepreneurship skills and um, business skills um, in these little corners of the globe uh, where they have like zero access. Yeah to this stuff. Um, it's actually pretty creative how, how they do it. So these like millennial, like gen X, Y, uh, types, which I'm not anymore as I just divulged a little while ago. Um, they come up with some incredible like stuff. So what they do is, okay. So, uh, it's, it's a, their, their organization, what they do is they, they contract with, uh, corporations, uh, big companies, a lot of times getting back to the whole talent acquisition and retention thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they consult organizations on how to acquire and retain LGBTQ talent, right? So they're they're basically consultants working for these corporations, um, helping them do that. Then what they do is they take that money that these companies pay them for their expertise, for their consulting, and they invest that money in these uh, developing nations with these impoverished communities to help them uh, build and create and grow and sustain mm-hmm. uh, their own businesses and be self-sufficient. So it, that's not anything that's like quorum specific necessarily, uh, but we have a close relationship with them and um, we work to support uh, a lot of these other smaller organizations um, in, in, in a lot of ways. Are you and, able to list any of the geographies that they've touched? Oh, I want to say maybe Ghana or Uganda. I think. Okay, uh, yeah. Africa. Yeah, yeah. If you, I was curious when you yeah. said that if they've been to any former communist countries because there's a, a difference between not having access to, you know, things of value that you could sell to make a living for yourself, and then mm-hmm. there's this side of uh, the values are so different, and what they've been taught for generations and generations is that this is greedy and this is evil, and you're, you know, you're going. I don't think they said that you're going to hell. I think there were less religious organizations, but uh, cultures, but. My dad did a lot of work. He's a privatization attorney. So when the wall came down, he's started traveling that part of the world mm-hmm. and privatizing 
and uh, it's a different world, man. You start a Kool Aid stand in some of those countries, and they're at your throat, like you wow. evil communist, evil evil capitalist, capitalist. scum. You think you're you better know. than us, and yeah, uh, or your, you're yeah. so greedy, you're so selfish. Why don't you think about the collective? Why don't you think about the re- well? The collective is starving, so we're gonna try this now. Yeah. I'm really curious when you talk about, especially on the trauma front, because mm-hmm. there are a lot of uh, things that people don't like to talk about because they're afraid that they'll insult someone's religion. Um, mm-hmm that cause that are cultural norms that cause extensive trauma in some of the darkest places on earth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm really wondering how that subject is breached um, by those kind of organizations. If they go into, say, you know, Southwest Asia, or if they go into places where um, the lifestyle and the values that some of, some of the people have there, um, not all, but a lot of the people in power um, are causing horrific trauma. Mm-hmm. You know, like I follow some of the hashtags, like hashtag free from hijab. And right now there's young women being imprisoned for decades for walking unveiled across Iran, which is growing, growing with momentum. But those early pioneers, you talk about the cutting edge, take off your veil in Iran, you'll see the cutting edge of a prison cell. Right. So I really wonder if they go and teach diversity of thought in countries like that or is that just not even ready for prime time yeah you know i did i go way off track no no this is this is actually I'm so sorry. I, no i just i i think we 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 might have uh shifted slightly out of my area of expert like i said i <laughs> i make podcasts so i don't <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> but and, and unfortunately, I don't I don't know enough about the specifics of the organization. But I, honestly, I think they they'd be great people to talk to. I'd love to have them on. Um, yeah, I can I can connect. If you anyone's with, interested in the question I just asked, with some people, um, um, diversity of thought in uh, emerging uh, emerging yeah, markets that would be a great and how we can topic actually. Yeah, yeah how yeah. we can lessen trauma in parts of the world where especially women and girls have no rights whatsoever. Back to the cutting edge things that a lot of people aren't talking about. That's, a lot yeah, of people be, aren't talking about be great, because they're yeah. afraid they'll be called racist. Um, I'm not afraid of anyone because I've buried my family. So I can't be hurt worse than I already am. So I'm willing to look someone in the eye and say, if you imprison a woman for taking off a scarf, a veil, a hijab, um, I have a problem with you. And if that makes me racist, first of all, that's not a race of people. That's just a bad idea, you know? But I think a lot of leftists are scared to talk about this stuff. And I, if I'm going to advocate for trauma survivors for the rest of my life, I can't be afraid of anyone. I certainly can't be afraid to call out traumatic behavior, you know? I don't know. I know I stepped outside your ring there, but uh, I'd really love to have someone on the show if they're open to talking about that. I Like like we started uh, this this uh, uh, this interview with, I, I know a lot of folks in the Sweet, nonprofit man. space. I could probably point you in the right direction for because sure. Because so. the scary thing is I've had conversations like that with people who have worked in those type of geographies mm-hmm. and they start to <clears> whisper. <throat> and I'm like, why are you whispering? And they're like, well, this comes off as such and such, or this comes off as... I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. If the Christian right did this to someone in Sweet Home, Alabama, we'd we'd knock the shit out of them. Why do we tolerate it in other parts of the world if we're really going to be champions? Well, so like one of the values uh, at DAP and, and one of my values that I personally embrace, like not knowing a ton about any of this stuff beyond just being able to talk a little bit about it on a podcast, uh-huh. um, is that, you know, we know that violence um, doesn't discriminate. Uh, violence and trauma doesn't discriminate. Mm. Uh, it, you know, it, it affects all cultures and races and religions and backgrounds and uh, walks of life, um, which is kind of the way, which is kind of the way I, I've sort of approached all of the work, uh, that I do. And, you know, definitely there, I mean, there's uh, obviously, honest, I mean, admittedly, there's a lot of nuance, you know, to, uh, to discuss and, and explore in all those areas, but sort of in, in general, I know that's, that's kind of, I think the organizations that I work with tend to approach, uh, violence and trauma and, and a lot of these issues that we're dealing with sort of in that in that way that we know that it that it doesn't discriminate and no. people of all backgrounds and identities and races uh are both victims of and you know are perpetrators of all kinds sure. of violence and trauma and abuse and lots of people are on both ends of it you know there's mm-hmm. people who um you know there's tons of women who are uh, propagating some of those those bad ideas about how their daughters should be raised and they're a part of it and they're like no don't talk back this is the way we do things and mm-hmm. da, da, da. and so yeah it, it's it's easy for things to get cloudy when someone's been on both ends of it mm-hmm. you know get the music behind the mission hate the coming by kelly nicole on itunes and spotify if you guys haven't checked out the merch table join the movie buy the album get your kelly nicole band merch and donate what you can at kelly nicole foundation.org Oh, just fun.